Welcome to another Foss North. I would like to start by thanking our gold sponsors, our silver sponsors, our base sponsors, and our partners from the community. So welcome back everyone. Um, with us now is uh, Zishan, who will talk about the uh, Zbus, so Dbus in Rust. So the stage is yours, Zishan. Hi everyone, <laughs> I'm Zishan. Uh, I'll switch to my sharing my screen now, uh, and then we can start the talk. Now we uh, see. I hope perfect. everyone can see. Uh, okay, cool. Um, so, um, I once again welcome everyone uh, to my talk about a project called Zebus, um, and where I'll explain why on earth I did, started this, and and then how um, how did I do it, and how, how you can use make use of it for your projects. Um, and um, first of all, who am I? Um, my name is Ishan Ali, and I'm a bit of a nomad, so I've lived in many countries, and it's very likely that I'll move yet again <laughs> so um at least there is one more country coming maybe it's a repetition of the countries that you see mm, yeah <laughs> uh, anyway and i work for um, a company called lumio um, we work um, we create a, a framework for um uh, a video um video analytics uh, so um uh, e e uh, people who have uh, lots of um, cameras on their shopping centers or whatever and they want some kind of uh, analytics, any kind of video analytics on it. Usually they start from scratch, but um, uh, this is why we made this platform so that they don't have to start from scratch always and waste so much money. They can just um, use our service and plug their cameras or whatever and do all the analytics there. Um, so yeah, check it out if you're interested in that or if you um, um, have such a <laughs> use case. Um, I am a big time FOSS uh, person. Uh, I, uh, like it's, I've been working with FOSS for two, uh, two decades now, by now. Um, um, and um, I am into flying. I first had a helicopter license from UK, and then I, had, I, I got my plane license in here. And nowadays I fly planes more, um, but it's also because it's cheaper <laughs> and easier to, to do. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I love cats. Um, um, so yeah, a bit of a background story on, on Zebus, uh, why I did it. Um, there's a project called GeoClue. Uh, it's a, a geolocation debus service, uh, which means it's um, the, the main task of the service is to find where the user is. And it's not done for you know some corporates or something, but it's a, it's a local only service. service, uh, service. Um, and it's um, like your local uh, apps uh, that can use it and there's ways to um, restrict who which apps the user wants their uh, location to be shared with and which not um, so so i um, um, but before we go on what is this dbus thing um, it's a very efficient binary ipc protocol um, and it's used a lot in in linux um, on both desktop and embedded systems um, it's the go-to solution um, still for, it's been for like 15 years now, at least. Uh, it has been the go-to solution for doing um, IPC on on, on um, a local, uh, at least local machine. But it can be used for RPC, but there is no standardized ways. Like you can plug in um, transport, but it's usually not used for that. And if you do use for that, please be very careful. Like uh, you will end up um, having a lot of problems if uh, you're not careful with um, allowing a remote access to Dbus services and I'll tell you why um, because it's used by systemd it's like a very you know a core part of your system so if you allow access to your um, your <laughs> your bus uh, dbus bus on on uh, uh, for your machine to or remote um, and if there's any security problems you can get into a lot of trouble um, and um, uh, it's used in gnome a lot it's like actually it's mainly was started by gnome uh, folks uh, gnome developers but it's also used by KDE and many others um, on, on the desktop and embedded systems. Um, it's um, uh, written in C. Uh, uh, the, um, uh, I'm talking about now GeoClue. Uh, sorry, I switched a bit. Um, it's, um, and um, 
I thought like, why not oxidize it? And also I've been a maintainer for, for a long time. There was a rewrite uh, in 2007 or eight. And ever since then I've been the maintainer. Um, and I was getting tired of writing C. So I was like, let's do Rust. Let's do it in Rust. Let's uh, change the, at least the service part to, to, to use Rust. Um, but you might ask um, why, why would I do that? Um, first of all, I was getting a lot of crash reports. Like I've been doing C for a really long time. Um, and if I can't, you know, if I can't do it perfectly, no, I mean, I, I am guessing there are many, many, many better programmers than me, but given my experience, I, I think I, I should be on top of crash reports, but I'm not, at least I'm not perfect. Maybe others are. Um, so yeah, I, I was getting tired of this and plugging them in and stuff. So it wasn't a very nice experience. Um, and also like it's the most sensitive data, your, your location uses location. So a crash or um, any memory sensitivity issues, like any kind of um, uh, security problems, uh, handling a memory, um, it could be a really huge deal um, if it happens. Uh, that's something that deals with your uh, act actual location. Um, so it, it, because of that reason also, like um, uh, Rust is, is the way to go um, because it's a very uh, safe but still efficient language. Um, but the last but not the least, I, I, I love Rust. So um, that would be the most important reason I have to admit. <laughs> um, and um, how do you how do you talk to you? But like, what what does it involve? Um, and um, so I, when I was looking into um, porting GeoClue to to, uh, to Dbus, sorry to to Rust, I thought of it like I have all the other crates. Like Crate is a library in in Rust, um, and there were crates for everything. And I was like, what what about Dbus? Um, so I thought like there must be a crate for it, right? And um, there was. It's a Dbus RS. In short, people call it a Dbus. Um, and I was like, cool, that's really awesome. It already exists. I don't have to do anything. Um, but that first thing it's, I find out is that it depends on a notorious uh, C library, a very low level, very, um, yeah, it's a C library, <laughs> basically. So it doesn't really map well um, into the Rust world or any high level language. Um, and it's this uh, Dbus RS is a wrapper around that. Um, so that was a bit of a bummer. Um, and there are some other issues, um, but I still decided to use it. I was like, it's already done. And I tried to cooperate and I even contributed to it, um, some patches and um, um, fixes. Um, but um, there were some, um, um, yeah, when I was at this Hackfest, Rust Gnome um, Hackfest in, in May 2019, um, that's when I was actually uh, trying to port GeoClue. And I started to use uh, Dbus RS in my code. Um, but the API turned out to be extremely complicated. And I was like, how do you use it? And I was trying to ask people around, but they couldn't tell me either, like all the Rust experts around. So I was like, if it's that complicated, then how about, uh, you know, um, I create my own Dbus crate from scratch. And the first thought was like, really? Like that's that's pretty, sounds like pretty hard work. Um, so I, I was like, how hard can it be? You know, like it's a, it's a IPC mechanism, it's just sockets. <laughs> so let's let's check it out. So I, I started looking into what's what could be involved and, um, first, like, uh, start looking at the specs. There's a Dbus spec, uh, and the, on the low level, it seems it's just message passing over sockets. Um, and um, there's a wire format uh, that defines what types you can transport and how, uh, in which, what is the binary uh, interface. Um, and it, it, this um, wire protocol is also called G variant, although it's a bit of it's a bit, bit misleading because G variant itself. Um, it's, a, it's a bit different than uh, Dbus wire protocol. It's an improved version of it. it. They made it a lot more efficient in glib, and they call it gvariant. Um, and when you use Dbus from from glib, um, it does the conversion. Like you, you have to deal with gvariant types, and it does the conversion back and forth. Um, so it's also a bit inefficient in that way. Um, um, so yeah. Um, but um, so there is the data types, different data types, and how defined is how in the spec is how you encode those data types. Um, they fortunately they at least they're all the basic types they were mapped exactly one to one to all the Rust uh, basic types, so that was really cool. And all the um, complex type, well, most of them at least they they map as well. Um, and so on the high level, it's like 
um, what what the users uh, see uh, by users I mean application developers is um, firstly there's um, concept of objects so uh, whatever you whenever you want to interface with a service like in this case for example GeoClue um, uh, you have different objects to, to talk to and um, those objects how do you how do you talk to them they, they define interfaces and each object can um, uh, uh, expose uh, multiple interfaces, uh, one or many, um, and then you can use those interfaces for, for different things. And it, it's a bit dynamic, so um, it's not like every object has to um, expose the interface forever. It's not static, it's, it's pretty dynamic, so they can add and remove interfaces on an object at runtime. Um, in this case, it's not a good example, actually, because it's one-to-one -one map, like there's one interface per object, but yeah, I, I think you uh, you get the picture. Um, and in each of these interface, you have methods that you can call. Um, it's simple, like um, it maps simply to the methods in, in Rust or any programming language out there. Um, and um, uh, you, they have in and out arguments. Um, and you, have multi, you can have multiple out arguments uh, actually in Dbus. So that's, that's really cool. Um, and you have something called signals. So if as a client, you want to be updated of some event, um, you can do um, you can uh, subscribe to signals on on an interface and then you get a signal for that um, and um, also to add to that there's also properties um, each object on a specific interface can expose different properties they can be read only they can be read and write they can be um, write only as well um, so um, yeah uh, it's just like fields in a struct or um, you know, in object-oriented languages, uh, you have these uh, either uh, properties or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's very similar. And also you have like signals for um, subscribing to property changes as well. Um, so that's really um, great. Um, so I was like, yeah, looking at all this, it doesn't seem that hard. Um, let's, let's try it anyway. So in those three days I was there, I was, I was already trying and um, I was like, let's really do this, right? Um, so Zbus was born there. Um, the name is really cool, as you will all agree. Um, it's, uh, it sounds cool. So yeah, that's the only reason I named it <laughs> Zbus. There's no other reason. <laughs> um, and um, so I, I you, you know, before you start a project and do something, you have to set goals. Otherwise, uh, it will be a chaos. So the first thing I wanted to do was ease, because um, as I said, with Dbus RS, that's the main problem I had. It wasn't really easy to figure. So I wanted something that's easy to figure, that's easy to uh, to use, and that uh, and still like have so much documentation, good documentation that um, even if it's something is not easy, it becomes easy through documentation. Um, and the second goal I wanted is to be extremely efficient, as efficient as possible. Um, and uh, but first things first, like before we do all that, like let's get started first, like let's get it done. And, and as I said, like um, the wire protocol, that would be the first thing. If you want to start from scratch, you, you, you need to have an implementation of that in, in Rust. Um, and I want to do all in, in Rust from scratch because um, that, that one, one of the reasons DBus RS is, is bad is because it, it, it uh, exposes the C intricacies and problems. Um, and I didn't want that. Um, so yeah, I, I created a create, like a sub create of ZBus first, which is called Z variant, which uh, which handles all serializing and deserializing of, of the data types from Rust to, to a DBus format and backwards. And um, actually, um, for, since one year, it, it also supports the G variant, the, the modified format that a lot of people use for, um, for as an efficient uh, small database uh, for keeping data around on, on, on disk. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want, if you have that need for, you know, um, keeping some data around, like small data, um, that you can use Zvariant for that as well. Um, so spent like several months on that, um, um, tried very different approaches. Like I had, like I hit, um, you know, I hit the wall many times on many, uh, <laughs> in many approaches. Um, and uh, fun, I had a lot of fun with something called lifetimes, because in, in Rust, if if you want, especially to write efficient code, right, um, API that is very efficient, you you have to deal with um, lifetime, something called lifetimes, which defines uh, the the lifetimes of the different re uh, references uh, that you're taking in or, or um, returning. 
um, and um, that could be that could be pretty a lot of fun. Um, and by fun, I, I don't mean fun actually. Um, and um, and the debug spec itself, like there were some things that were not very clear. And um, I, I, I tried many approaches and I thought I, I made it work. But then when I gave talks, people would come to me, by the way, this thing you got wrong. And uh, I was like, oh, and um, yeah, and that would be a big deal. Um, so anyway, I, I finally arrived to Z, Z variant 1.0 and we released it and it was cool. Um, but then I realized that it can't handle the uh, empty areas. And this is one of the problems with, with the spec that it didn't make that clear how to um, uh, handle, how to serialize or especially de serialize arrays. Um, and um, yeah, uh, the approach that I took for Z variant 1.0, it just, it just couldn't work. So um, I had to rethink the whole approach. And then I started thinking about Serde. Serde is a um, great, in um, in Dbus, uh, sorry, in in Rust, uh, that is used a lot. Um, it's like the the go to trait uh, or library for whenever you need to do any kind of serialization or deserialization from any format. Um, so uh, and uh, and actually, the first uh, issue someone filed on Z variant was was about this. Like, why not why not Serde? So yeah, I, I decided like, oh okay, let's let's do Serde, and. Um, Another few months of fun. <laughs> um, Serde is not, um, it's very easy to use in many ways, but it's not easy to implement. And together with Dbus, it was, it, it was, a, it didn't map exactly to, to Serde uh, for a few reasons. And that was, that was not fun at all. Um, and after um, a, a lot more, um, you know, um, weekends uh, uh, sacrificed and also a, a Christmas holiday, um, I finally got there, and zero zero into the zero was released, and it's completely Serde based. It's really um, as is an API as you will expect in, in Rust for for serializing and deserializing. Um, this is how it looks like. Um, this, this context thing that you will see um, is something uh, that I wish that it wasn't needed, but it, it is needed. Like um, usually in a when you want to do serializing, deserializing for any format that you will find out there like JSON or whatever, uh, the, the crates that are available, you will see the, the, the last three lines mainly, you know, like two bytes, like you, you encode two, two the bytes, uh, a particular uh, type, and then you can uh, say from slice, like uh, it's a slice of data, you, you um, deserialize from it, and that's it. Um, but in our case, we need the context um, for, for multiple reasons. Um, as I said, said they didn't map ex exactly to Dbus. It was a pity, but I, I, I still believe it's not that bad. It's like you just need one extra step with, um, with Z variant. Um, and um, for those of you who don't know what's going on, um, who haven't done Rust much, uh, that uh, uh, when we do a let T equal to, um, and then this, this is an anonymous struct, which is called tuple. Um, so we are creating an anonymous struct um, without creating a new type, name type. And then we, we just, convert it to bytes, and then we do the opposite in here. And, but we have to tell it the exact uh, type, right? Which, uh, what, what it should be deserialized to, and then it gets deserialized. Um, back to Dbus. <laughs> um, it was a slow progress at first, especially because of like getting Z variant right was, was, a, was a huge project on its own. Um, so, uh, but there was other reasons too, like I, I was doing it all on my spare time, right? So, it, it, and I didn't have a lot of it. Um, and in the meantime, like instead of, like many people, instead of helping me out, they, they got this idea, oh, Divas is cool, like let's uh, make crates for it. Like when they would attend my talks or, or uh, hear about Z, Zbus, they will be like, yeah, let's, let me try it as well <laughs> from scratch. And most of them, they don't end up anywhere. They, the, the best they, they, they end up doing is like using it for their own very specific uh, case. And of course, only implementing what, what they need, uh, but no general solution. So it would have been so cool if, if people would have you know, helped me instead. Um, but um, yeah, help me out. If, if you have this idea, please, please help me. Consider help me out, helping me out first. And then if it doesn't work out with us, it, it, uh, of course, there's always reasons you know, um, to, to do your own thing. And I don't blame you. Um, and it, of course, it's your right. But consider helping me out, please, first. <laughs> um, 
But the thing is, like, one of the people, they had the great idea. It's an like old friend of mine. Um, we, we, we go way back. This is a picture uh, when we went to um, the Star Trek convention after um, a Guadec, um Gnome Users uh, and Developers Conference in Berlin in um, 2000, what was it? I don't even remember, uh, 11, I think. Um, and uh, we worked many times together uh, in Nokia in, in Red Hat and many places. And he came to the rescue because he needed this as well. And he got involved and it got really, he really helped me speed up the process. And um, we had lots of disagreements. We, we also disagree so much. It's, it's annoying at some points for both of us, but um, we, we make it somehow work in the end. And uh, we made 1.0 last year. It was awesome. And it was uh, well received. Uh, everyone was happy about it. Um, everyone who has um, especially used Dbus RS and then they tried Zbus, they were like, wow, this is, this is a whole new level and it's much better. And just to give you a, uh, this was a uh, ex colleague of mine recently uh, tweeted Alberto. Um, it's so awesome! I want to cry out of joy. <laughs> and um, and the person that who's replying to it, they were he was uh, like also saying that he's de deployed something for one thousand users. And then they decided that okay, they want want to praise as well. I'm really sorry if you can't see this one. It's just a praise of <laughs> Zebus, and you can find out on your own on, on Twitter if you're really interested. It's um, and the name is Fluke, Fluke Jones. So you can see their tweet if you want. Um, anyway, how does it look? Um, putting my ego aside. <laughs> how does it look like, really, if I'm saying such good things? So this is how, how you, um, a simple program. It's actually a working example from our repo. Um, uh, the, what it does is simply to um, step up the, uh, the, the screen brightness um, on your GNOME-based system. Um, I'm sorry uh, uh, for all the KDE folks out there. I don't know the KDE interface. If I knew, I, I could add it. Um, but it's, there's nothing against you. Um, but anyway, yeah, this, was, uh, this is an example. Um, and um, um, it's, you just create a connection to, to the bus. There's two kinds of uh, buses on your local system, usually the session and the system bus. Session buses per user, usually. Um, and, um, and yeah, you just tell it which um, uh, in, uh, which um, uh, uh, service you want to uh, connect to, which um, uh, object, and which interface on that, and then um, the method name and and the arguments. In this case, there are no arguments. Um, there is only the argument, the uh, return argument, which in this case, when you, um, the last two lines, uh, when I um, uh, after calling the method, I get a reply message, and I get the body of the message uh, deserialized um, to based on what type they are. And the first one, the first, the first return argument is a, a percentage of the the level of the brightness, right? Current brightness that after setting the new brightness level. Anyway, I'm going into too much detail, but um, suffice to say, it's the low level interface. If, but even still, it's like, if you look at it, it's not that bad. Like even the low level interface is pretty pretty easy to use. But um, even though it's pretty easy, um, I thought we can do better. So there's a high level API as well. And there's two kinds of high level APIs. There is one that is um, very generic. It's not very type safe, but it's like super generic. Like you can use that. Um, it's, uh, it's through proxies and something called object server for the service side. Um, let's see that um, the client side, but what I'll show is uh, something even better, which is more specific. And that's through something um, called macros in Rust. In, in Rust, like just like C, there is macros, but they're extremely powerful. And this is um, one of the macro we provide is called dbus proxy. And with that, you can define an interface um, in, in Rust, uh, uh, trait is just like an interface in many programming languages. You, with it, you define an interface. Um, so since it's mapped so nicely to interfaces in, uh, on, uh, on Dbus, and on, and on the client side, that's what you're interested in. You, you need to just say what interface is on the other side, and then you can use it, right? So that's what you do exactly. You um, Using this macro, you define a trait with which you define the, the interface of the other side. And then you can use it. How do you use it? 
That's good. You um, like just like before, you create a connection first, which is not included in this example, but you saw that already. How how to do it with one line, and then you just pass. You just create a proxy, um, uh, and um, uh, this um, and give it a connection, and then you can call the notify. You will see it's very similar to previously, but it's a bit more high level, a bit less code, and um, uh, the uh, the caller already um, has type safety in here, um, and the thing is like many times, a lot of times you will have you want want to ex expose this to your user. Like if you are writing a library and that interfaces with a specific uh, service, a lot of people are doing that actually already, um, and you just um, expose the generated uh, macro generated um, interface to to your users um, to the applications. And um, yeah, uh, they don't have to worry about which types they need to pass and not. It's already defined for them, and they can just uh, you know um, they know it, and also the compiler knows it, so the compiler won't let them pass uh, you know wrong data. Um, how about uh, signals and properties? Um, you um, similarly uh, you define a trait like in this example we are dealing with uh, GeoClue as a client. Um, and um, uh, you define the, the service, you define the interface, the default uh, service and interface, and then you define the, what, what interface is there. Um, you say, like, you can declare it as a prop property, uh, a, a function, and if you, if it's a property setter that you see, and the next one you see is a property getter. The, only, the difference you will see is like mainly that uh, set, uh, underscore prefix with the setter, and with the getter, you don't have that. And um, uh, yeah, the return value and the arguments are therefore different. Um, yeah, and um, similarly, signals uh, location updated. You just declare it like that within your um, inter within your trait, and then you, the uh, appropriate code is generated for you. Um, and how do you use that then? Uh, first thing, we set a property. You set the property, and the unwrap is just for like if 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 there's an error when you when you're setting it, uh, you you just say I don't care, just just crash if <laughs> if the property is not settable, which is not a good thing to do usually, but in for examples it's it's fine. Um, but yeah, and then um, you can connect to the location updated signal um, by name, and the, the, when you when you're connecting, it's the it's the type safe, so you you can't use the wrong types again. Um, yeah, you, in here you just uh, print the uh, locations, the old location, new location, and um, then um, uh, you uh, call next signal uh, repeatedly to just uh, keep on handing signals as long as it's possible. Um, so uh, yeah, um, that's how it's done, uh, the, the client side. Um, what about server side? Um, you have a um, similar thing, in, but instead of... Um, um, a trait you define the implementation because it's server side. You have to implement it. You have to uh, define how it's how it will be handled. This, this the calls and stuff. Uh, similarly, you define a function uh, and you actually define it. You define what it what should be done. And this function does a similar simple thing. It says hello back um, to the whatever was uh, sent to it. And then um, you use something called object server. And um, similarly to the uh, proxy, you, you define, you, you give it a connection object on which connection it should run on. And then you just say server at, and then um, you know which, which object path it should go on. Like that's defining the object. And then, um, uh, yeah, um, uh, greeter is, um, um, actually this uh, try into, do you see? It's, it's, we have removed it in, in 2.0. We will talk about that later. But uh, you you don't need, you no longer need to do that anymore, um, and uh, you just pass it uh, uh, the the object that we defined before uh, that the type we, we defined before the server side, um, and then uh, yeah you you just handle uh, you tell server to start handling requests and it if there's an error it will print that error here it's just an infinite loop here for a demonstration so yeah it's as easy as that. Um, but still not easy enough um, on both client side and server side. Uh, so at least for client side, we right now have a tool called Dbus XML Gen, um, which uh, generates the, the code for you um, based on an interface. So the Dbus interfaces, they have um, introspection support. And um, 
um, most services implement this, uh, fortunately. So um, what you can do is um, um, you can ask for it um, over the over the bus, and it uh, uh, and that service returns the introspection date. Uh, it's in the form of XML, and that's why it's called this tool is called XML Gen, and it, this has various options. Um, recently, someone added. Uh, the option that it can directly talk to this to the uh, to the service you're interested in um you just tell uh, the the tool uh, what service you're interested in and which object you're interested in and it just gets everything and generates the, the code for you um so pretty neat huh or you can just give it the xml file interface xml and that also works um if it's still not easy um we have a book um, for our 1.0 uh, right now, uh, at least. Um, and um, um, yeah, uh, it defines, like it at least explains all the essentials, uh, how, how to get started. Um, and most people who use it, at, uh, who use Zbus, I think they, they start from that as far as I have understood and they find it very useful. So if you're, if you're interested, start with there. Um, but the one of the most important thing that's missing is asynchronous API. Like all the API that you saw was completely uh, synchronous. And in, in Rust, it's not that big a deal, actually. It's a high level language. And if you're not that, um, you know, if your resources are not so constrained, um, you're, for example, doing it for desktop or high end embedded even, um, you, um, uh, yeah, it's, um, um, it's okay. You can you can run it in in a separate thread. There's channels in the standard library. You can communicate with that uh, thread with that. It's it's not that big, but still, it would be super awesome if we had asynchronous API. And a lot of people have asked for it. Um, but um, the async um, uh, ecosystem in 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 Rust um, for a while has not been that nice. Like from a user point of view, it's already quite there, like uh, a lot of like uh, crates out there that provide in, uh, uh, the API. And if you use it, um, and if you decide on something called runtime, there are different runtimes and they're in competition more uh, more rather than cooperation. Um, at least till uh, recently they have been. Um, so um, for a lot of things, you have to decide which runtime you have to use. And we didn't want to do that. We didn't want to take sides and we wanted a, a generic API that just works with all runtimes, whichever you, you choose to use. Um, but that's that's been that's that was a very big difficulty in creating async uh, APIs in, in Zbus. Um, but um, we already have the low level, um, and it looks something like that. I I have grayed out all the um, interface um, that. Um, uh, or the um, code that is the same um, as with the synchronous code that I showed you is the same example as the changing the power level of the screen, uh, stepping it up a bit. Um, but the, the differences are, are highlighted. The first one is that instead of a connection, you, you say something async, uh, like a, uh, in a different module, all the async API we are putting in, a, in the async um, uh, submodule. Um, and um, yeah, you create a sub, uh, different connection, and inst uh, when you call the method, you just say dot await, and because you want to wait for it, and um, and the the, um, the thing is that uh, you want to use it from an async context where you can call dot await because it has to, um, you know, um, um, uh, you, you don't want to block on it, and uh, dot await is not for blocking; it's for um, yielding your current uh, uh, task or a thread, um, and, and that's why you can only use it from from an async context. Um, I, I won't go into um, how to use async in, in Rust in here because I, I don't have the time. Um, but there is a book about it, um, and there is other resources, and there's I know a very good um, tutorial um, that I can share with you after this talk. If you're interested, just ask me, and I can I can tell you. And it explains so well um, how to use async in Rust. And then you will uh, understand it much better, this, these examples I'm showing you. But I, I have to show you these examples. If you don't know async and Rust, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I can't explain all the details. Um, but yeah, um, uh, suffice it to say for now is that um, you have these uh, differences. Um, but uh, how about high level? Um, on the client side, we already have um, the client side part uh, mostly done. Um, instead of um, a proxy, like um, the, the macros that I showed you, 
Um, they already generate the async proxy as well. Um, and uh, instead of it, it called notifications proxy in this example, it will be called async notifications proxy. And someone is already adding um, attributes to the macro, so you can control how different proxies are called and naming and all that. So you will have more control over that soon. Um, but yeah, for now it's like this, and it's exactly the same. Um, uh, it's just like you have to do dot await again when you call the method. Um, so what about signals and properties? Um, similarly, um, you. Um, dot await and uh, location updated. Um, you connect a, s a signal and, uh, but when you connect a signal, you have to pass uh, not just a closure, but a closure that returns an async um, um, block. It's, an, um, it's, um, it's a piece of code that, that, run, that can run asynchronously, let's put it that way. And you can define that dynamically in, in Rust by saying async and then start a block. But um, in, in here, uh, we want to move the data. Um, actually, in this example, I, I don't think we I actually needed the move. Um, but this is, um, yeah, you can remove the move in here, I think. Um, but yeah, in some cases, you need to use the move um, for if you want to move some data into this context. Um, anyway, um, so you, you want to return an async um, context that, that um, our machinery can then call asynchronously. And, and the advantage of that is that if you need to do further async stuff within the callback, you can do that um, because it's all async. And of course, let's start class time dot async dot await. And how do you how do you um, make the machinery run? Um, you just like last time, um, you say proxy dot uh, in this case we named it client, client dot next signal. And then the difference is that you say dot await um, uh, instead of uh, not saying dot await. Um, anyway, yeah, so this is the async version of it. And that's the client side for, for um, signals. But um, what I showed you, like connecting signals and then, you know, calling next next uh, signal yourself, um, it's, uh, it's not very, um, it's not the way usually you, you would expect async REST code to work. In, in async, you have something called streams, which is, Mm, an uh, async iterator in, in a way, and actually uh, there is plans of um, maybe naming naming stream renaming streams to async iterators. Um, so you you can iterate over something, but asynchronously. And for receiving something over a network or IPC socket, um, this uh, uh, streams is uh, um, is the is the way to go. Uh, is someone saying something? Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, well, what about that then? Um, and um, since that that's a lot more ergonomic to use uh, in Rust. Um, so yeah, you can already do that. We we, we provide um, on a proxy. This is the generic proxy code, which without using the macros. So that's why you have to tell it um, in as a string, like which signal you you want to receive, and then it creates a stream for you. Um, and once it creates a stream you can iterate over all these signal messages. And as you see, it's a bit low level because you are dealing with messages and you have to, um, um, uh, you know, deserialize the body and you have to tell it exactly what type it is as, as a user as the, uh, uh, on the client side code. And um, yeah, it's, it's not that bad actually. And it's, uh, it works really well. And the, and the thing about streams is that there's already API provided where you can combine streams uh, by a crate called futures and a lot of that will go into the standard library in Rust at some point. That's the hope, at least. Um, and and you can combine streams, you can filter streams, you can um, you can chain them. You can there's a lot of ways, and you can select over them. So if you want to process one at a, one item from e either stream, you like you have multiple stream, yeah, and you are only interested in um, uh, next one item from it, you can you know select over them and stuff. So there's a lot of um, interesting API that you have. That you can use here, um, and um, but I'm working right now, as of this moment, <laughs> to make um, to provide uh, through the macros that you have specific. You can create specific streams for specific um, signals, uh, like you saw before when I uh, declared um, the, the the proxy site for for the GeoClue. Um, uh, um, uh, the, the in the future, the macro, the same macro will will generate 
code that so, so that you can do this. Um, you can say receive location updated, which is specific signal, and then you create a specific stream, and then you can iterate over that stream. And what you get is a signal uh, object, is a special um, uh, type, it's a struct, um, and um, you can say dot view, and you get a view towards um, the 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 data, the the, the return values. Um, well, it's, in this case, it's not exactly return values because uh, you didn't call a method. It's just that you are getting a signal. Um, but notice that you don't need to tell it what types are involved because you already declared it this in the signal when you defined the interface. So, um, so yeah, it's it's um, much easier and much more type safe uh, for for the uh, end client in this case. Um, this will be available soon. <laughs> um, server side async not there yet, but but we have it in mind, and hopefully it will be there soon, coming very soon. And all of this will be part of uh, 2.0. Um, most of what I just showed you, it's not yet there. It's not, you, can, you can't uh, use it, but you can use it if you really want to, you can use it with the beta releases that we are doing for the 2.0, um, which is hopefully coming soon. Um, and um, I'm hoping to release uh, another uh, beta release for 2.0. Um, before the before I get to the server side, but you can use the client side already with, with this. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, I'm I'm sorry I had to rest through a lot of things and I could not explain everything in detail. Um, uh, so, but we have time for questions. I think uh, Johan will tell us how much time we have for questions. So, go ahead. That is your time to to make me explain things. <laughs> Um, so, uh, first, yes, this is the first, first <laughs> online moment online for me. For me. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, but yes. you're a bit uh, echoey, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, I'll, I'll, I'll make myself silent so that... If you kill the screen, screen we will see you also, Zishan. <laughs> oh, I brought them up. Yay! <laughs> is the echo gone? Yes, you're okay, good now. Cool. So uh, a couple of questions here from the side. Um, did you count how many complete rewrites you did? I, I didn't get that part. Rewrites of what? Uh, how many uh, did, did you count? How many complete rewrites uh, you did of, of uh, when um, writing Zbus? You mentioned you did a couple of rewrites. No, uh, what I meant was like I did a whole rewrite of the whole stack, so it's a crate that is completely written from scratch uh, to handle Dbus. So, um, yeah, I, I uh, used of course uh, uh, the the Rust crates out there for different purposes, but I didn't you know uh, didn't do anything for Dbus. All the Dbus stuff is is my my code or Mark Andre's code or whoever <laughs> contributed to Dbus. So you write once and then it's perfect. <laughs> so um, risking like to start says, a flame. <laughs> says it's the best. So <laughs> clearly risking <laughs> to start a flame war here. So mind you, um, uh, with your experience in C and Rust, what are the most significant differences between the, uh, those two languages? Oh, um, well, the first thing is like Rust is very high level. Um, so you, you see that when you're using it, um, there's a lot more, um, you know, utilities available, a lot more um, helpers available, and um, yeah, and you don't have to um, do, you know, pointer arithmetic anymore most of the time. Um, I recently had to do some C after a long time, and I just couldn't do it. I, I was getting a crash, and I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, um, you get spoiled very easily. Uh, with, with Rust. Like I, uh, I, in, I, I, I think I can give a separate talk about that. Uh, actually, I submitted a separate talk for this <laughs> <laughs> in this conference. It didn't get accepted, but um, <laughs> I, I don't blame. I mean, how many talks can I give in one conference? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Another one is, um, what users does Zbus currently have? Uh, uh, there is a, a component of Flatpak, like some crate that handles Flatpak stuff, um, uh, written by Bilal. 
Um, and uh, yeah, they have been using uh, uh, Zebus very nice, uh, like very, they are very happy about it and they contributed back even. And um, the, the, the user I mentioned, Fluke, um, I think their name is Luke, but I'm not so sure. Um, their hand, Twitter handle is Fluke. Um, and um, actually it was Fluke Newcomb at some point. It was really cool because <laughs> they're into gaming. So they are, they they have some code that is, they said that they, it's used by thousands, at least a thousand users, at least. Uh, they said a lot more probably. And that's um, using um, yeah, uh, Zebus behind the scene. Uh, there is uh, some people who um, who said they will happily use Zebus as soon as the async uh, uh, you know APIs are there, and they will be super happy to use it after that. Um, yeah, um, I don't know. Uh, they, you can you can also like uh, at least uh, the the crates that are published on crates.io. You can um, you can check that on on crates.io uh, which ones are using. There's a dependency graph and stuff. Um, but we are also using at work. Um, that code is not open, um, but it's uh, at least not yet. Hopefully, maybe at some point it's open source. But um, yeah, we are using it. Uh, here's one more. How many active contributors do you have? Active. Uh, I don't know how, how you define active, though. Because, uh, for example, Mark Andre, he will contribute like, whoa, like it's like, like a one PR with twenty commits, and then another PR with thirty more, and then it's like going like this. And you, I can't, you know, I don't even know how to review it because it's so much <laughs> contribution. Um, but um, but yeah, then he would not contribute for months. So it's like um, as when he gets time from uh, other things, I guess. Um, so it's a bit hard to uh, list active, you know. Like, uh, but if I would calculate all the contributors, it's. Uh, it's, uh, I think, about 10 or so. But it's it's still a new project, you know. It's like uh, like the 1.0 we had only last year uh, when it was, we, we had any stable API you could use. <laughs> yeah. I have a private question. Uh, don't worry. Um, so uh, wait, wait, wait. This, this is still being broadcasted and recorded, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... Um, can you give examples of the arguments you had? Because you, you mentioned you had a lot of discussions about the what I figure was the, the design of, of Zbus. Oh, uh, with the Mark Andre. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's mainly it's but about their use case, right? And and the specific context they're they're aiming for, um, and their their context is like the um, uh, QMU. Um, so they're they're trying to use it in a QMU, you know, the uh, virtualizer. <laughs> what do you call it? Uh, uh, virtual machines. Um, so anyway, and in that very specific context, well, what they are trying to do is it makes sense. But and usually in my uh, con like the context that I'm worrying about, and I have I worry about actually more generic use uses. Um, so for that reason, for example, we had arguments about own data and unowned data, like they, they, they didn't want to care about unowned types. Like they said, yeah, you just allocate strings, you know, it's fine. You, you just return allocated strings and copied strings. And I was like, no, uh, we have to provide um, unallocated like access, like so that people don't have to allocate for no reason. Um, and I didn't actually succeed 100% in that regard. <laughs> uh, also because I, I, they were doing the work. I, I didn't have time for, for doing it. So we ended up with at least some APIs that um, that does allocation, and there's a, quite a few allocations, but we minimized it as much as I could in my time. Um, so that was one one thing we disagreed sort of on. Um, but yeah, it's usually different approaches like to the same problem. They say this is the ergonomic API. I say no, this is the ergonomic way. So um, yeah, it's it's mostly subjective. It's it's a bit hard to <laughs> agree on these things. Yeah. Uh, cool. I think I'm checking. There's no more question popping in there. Oh, uh, the questions are through. Yeah, thank so you. Big, big thank you for being here, Sishan. Uh, always nice to have you here. So Next we are time we're in time. You're out of time now for questions? We're, yeah, we're, we're, we're out of questions. But if you have questions, please go. <laughs>
<laughs> no, uh, is there no nobody else on the call on the talk, or is it is it just four of us? No, no, no. You're on on a YouTube broadcast as well, so it's, oh, okay. we're we're collecting the questions. Sorry for oh. being unclear about that. Yeah, no worries. But uh, but I think um, uh, I provided the uh, once again. I'll, I'll share my screen for one second. Uh, for uh... yes. Ah. Uh. We have another question here. Is peer-to-peer -peer DBus supported? Yeah, everything is frozen on my end. Can you hear me still? Yes. Okay, good, because everything is frozen here. Anyway, peer-to-peer um, -peer DBus was there from the scratch, and that's thanks to Mark andre um, because uh, that's their use case, peer-to-peer. -peer. So it's already there, don't worry. <laughs> Super, and, and the, the Ole Andre who asked it also says, awesome talk, by the way. Big hand. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> well, Ole Andre, yeah, I know this guy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> cool. But then I'll I'll think we we will thank you and yeah. give a big big wave to the audience and and we will get ready for the next speaker. But yeah, uh, one one thing before we yeah. leave, um, uh, I can't share my screen for some reason, but uh, I shared um, the Twitter handle. Uh, we are um, our crate has a Twitter account where we announce new releases and everything. So if you want to follow up or ask any questions, um, yeah, uh, please use that. It's Zebus, the, the way it was written, Zebus underscore crate. So that's the handle on Twitter if you want to ask me. I put it in the uh, in the chat as well on YouTube, so now everyone has it. OK, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much Perfect. for having me. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Bye. Thanks, Cheers, Mike.